Is your ELO between 1200 and 2000? In this video, I'm showing you advanced strategies that are perfect for you. In one game, I actually get a winning position in just seven moves. Enjoy. There we go. White pieces against Cyderman from South Africa. Ooh, they play the Nimsa, which defends every time somebody doesn't play e5 or c5, just go with the pawns in the middle of the board, strong, control the center. And now we simply develop, develop, develop. First the knights, then the bishops, and then castle. That's quite standard. Okay, I think like my opponent is starting something that looks like a French. I like to push to keep my, to have space advantage because my pawn is pushed forward. And then I need to develop all my pieces. So usually in the French, my opponent has the idea of playing the move c5. Now they don't have it because there is a knight in between. So how do I develop all my pieces? Yeah, this is a really very important tip. Uh, once you don't know exactly what to do, think about how to develop all your pieces, not just one at a time. Because if you then develop, uh, for example, a knight here, and you say, okay, but where do I go with the bishop? So let's think about the whole picture. So what we could do, the bishop looks very natural here on this three, right? Good. Then how is this knight going? Because there is always the idea of knight here attacking this bishop. So maybe I would like to play the move c3, having four connected pawns in the board, which doesn't make you win the game in chess. Okay, so bishop here, c3 could be a very good setup. And then maybe we will castle short and we have to be smart with those two pieces. We might go with the knight maybe towards g3 square. Uh, so play something in style of the Spanish. I really like this plan. I really like this plan, so I will play the move c3 first, then pushing, placing my bishop here. Then maybe I will go with the, with the knight towards the square, so I don't have to first castle and then... Okay, let's play queen here as well. Because you never know, I might be playing the move g4 and winning a pawn for free. So I think my opponent needs to play the move... Ooh, 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 ooh. I, I just do that. I just do that. And it's very cool that I didn't castle, because... Like this, I can simply take here. I mean, I will. Yeah, I will. I will take here. The king moves. Now you have to be careful that you actually go back. But I think I will go back. So I can take here. And then simply go all the way back. Because if you don't go back, there will be the move g6. And then you need to be careful. Because this bishop is stuck. And so you can you sacrifice? But I don't think this is good. Because I'm opening up the f file. And my king would be suddenly weak. So I just go back all the way. I have an extra pawn and now maybe I will change all the way my plan. I will just play bishop here and go for a long castle. My king will be super safe there. And I can start to play moves like knight here maybe. Okay, bishop here, perfect. We go. I could have played also bishop h6. I should have considered that a move, but it's fine. Just, just safe, easy, simple. Now, you know what? My opponent is attacking the center. That's a great idea. Usually in such position, when the center is blocked, you got to attack on the sides, right? Uh, also, the king got castle on opposite side, so really would be great to give checkmate to this king. Now, the question is how to do it. And I think a good way could be to play f4 and f5, because I cannot push the h-pawn, simply. If not, I would love to push h4, h5, try to open this and give checkmate. But f4, f5 seems like very reasonable. Also, I'm not scared about moves like c4, because it closes everything for me, so I'm happy. And after this, I could even take with my bishop. I could even take with my bishop, maintain the protection to my king and my queen as well. Another way to keep going would be knight g3, also supporting the pawn to be pushed on f5. Okay, perfect. I just go back. And now, can I push here on f5? I think not yet, because if I do that, bing, boom, bang, and I can't take. So I will go with the knight here, supporting it. And then I will throw the pawn all the way. Bang! There we go. This is a very important move. And now my opponent is basically lost. Because if I'm getting with my pawn on f6, that will be game over. I mean, imagine then a queen getting gear and checkmate on g7. Oh my god, did I, did I just remove that? Imagine pawn takes, queen takes. That would have been horrible. For real. But okay, f6, the queen getting to h6. 
and that would be checkmate. Also, now I have the option to play h4, h5. I'm thinking shortly what to do about this, because I have six I cannot do, I lose a bishop. And if I take, the queen is very active. So my idea here, my first instinct is to play queen d2. I'm attacking this, but there is this pawn that is no longer protected. But if my opponent takes here, I win a piece. So if they want to take on f5, they have to first take here. I take with my queen. The queen is here. And if they take, I have a check. The king moves. I go with the knight. Oh, oh boy, that's great. So I don't lose a pawn. I can play this move. Also, my queen is getting, you know, is getting exactly where she wants to be. She wants to be on this diagonal to go eventually on h6 and deliver an amazing checkmate. I think I'm winning. Okay, great move by my opponent. Uh, but I will still give this check. The king can go just here and then I will take here. Now, if the bishop takes, I'm taking. And if knight takes, I give a check and this is basically checkmate. The queen needs to go, I give checkmate. If the pawn takes, I can go directly with my knight here. Okay, we are gonna see that this is checkmate and after pawn takes, the rook is joining. That's just how you attack your opponent king when the king are castled on opposite sides and the center is blocked. Just go all in, open the files and deliver the final checkmate. I think they might just resign here. Yo! New game, everybody. We have the black pieces this time. After e4, I play the move e5. I suggest really everyone to start playing chess and get experience or at least try this setup, e4, e5. What did my opponent just play? <laughs> okay, I'll just attack this knight, develop. I think they just lost the tempo. They would like me to be white. They want, they ask me, please be white. I don't know how to be, how to play with the white pieces. I will play d6. I mean, I'm just developing all my pieces. That's what I'm doing. Simple as it is. My opponent is playing a bit strange. Honestly, not developing in the most effective way. This is, what is this knight here doing? You want to play f4? I mean, I don't think you can. Oh, listen. I think there is a move here that is very strong. And it's knight g4. You might say, okay, you're attacking a pawn, but isn't simply castle solving all the problems because usually you don't want to trade a knight and a bishop for a rook and a pawn uh, because the minor pieces are stronger in the middle game. So what do you want to do after knight here, castle, I will go with the queen here and then the queen is attacking at the same point h2 but also f2. So after h3 I'm just taking here with the bishop or with the knight somehow I'm taking there and I think I'm already completely winning. <laughs> okay so do we take with the knight or with the bishop? I think I will take with the knight. Looks stronger because I'm attacking the queen and I'm threatening discovery checks. Okay, that's just a check. We take back and the problem is the same. Now my opponent had to sacrifice this probably, just had to do that. Okay, so I could take with the bishop, I could take with the queen. Both are looking good. I think like maybe with the bishop is safer. I mean, I'm not sure. Okay, I will take with the queen. Looks cool. I don't have an immediate checkmate, I cannot say, I was thinking about sacrificing this check, but I don't see anything. So I will castle and maybe try to play a five, bring the rook into the action. Also generally, I mean, I'm already very happy to be an exchange up. I have a rook in exchange of a knight, so that's quite good. Now I will take here and my opponent needs to be careful because the queen is hanging. And now I take and there are pieces also hanging, so they cannot take with the knight, attention. And they have to take with the pawn. Perfect. Uh, now we bring just all the pieces. Just all the pieces. Let's bring the other rook into the game. And this should be quite an easy win. Rook here. Now I would like to set up a checkmate. Okay, let's go with the pawn here. I'm just controlling this knight. Perfect. Now I want to push and push. Okay, my opponent is getting some space. Bishop goes here, attacking the rook, and this bishop is crying because he's lost. The rook needs to move, and then the bishop is lost forever. Maybe my opponent will just let the rook go and play something like rook e1. Okay, or knight there, fine. But I think this still works for me very well. I take here, knight takes, I take, and after the knight takes the bishop, I take here, and I will have a full rook. Okay, um, bishop here, looks fun, I'm attacking this pawn, oh, and they resign, perfect. There we go, white pieces, e4, Alex Piello, all the way from Poland. 
And I play e4, e5, so that's amazing. I like to play the Spanish, and there we go. This is the real opus or Spanish. The idea of this opening is to attack this knight that is protecting the pawn. But attention! We cannot take and take the pawn. Because after bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes, there is a strong queen here. And the queen is attacking at the same time the knight and our pawn. So what do we have to do? We go back, then we castle. We need to protect first this pawn, and then we can take this other one. So we castle. Now this pawn is hanging, but not really, because if knight takes, uh, then the rook could go here, and then we have lots of compensation against the king. My opponent is walking into some danger. I have a strong move, and I think I will play it, and I will do it. Yeah. <laughs> knight here. What's the idea? I'm giving up a piece, but there is a very strong reason. After knight takes, I'm just pushing here and giving a fork. That's why my opponent is just sacrificing the bishop. Now I take. The knight is taking. We have equal material, but now I will push. I have two strong pawns in the center of the board, so I can be satisfied about what is happening right now. Now there is a knight attacking the rook. I can simply, well, I can simply go back here. And my opponent is in danger. It looks like this knight is strong, but that knight is bad. Because after e5, I'm attacking the only piece that is protecting it. And then those two knights are just saying, oh no, oh no. They have to leave each other and one will fall. Okay, my opponent is trying to hold, but this is just a move that is prolonging the threat. And now this will be lost. In one of my YouTube videos, I didn't make an empassant. And now I could make an empassant. And they told me that it's the rule of thumb that when you can make an empassant, you have to make it because, you know, you show power. But no, no, I'm gonna take this, and if you want to be unhappy, you can be unhappy with it. Okay, now I have an extra piece I develop here, I'm pinning this knight, and what I will do here, I think I will try to be, okay, very annoying, I take here because my opponent has a castle, yeah, my opponent, my opponent, my opponent king is very weak, and then I go with the queen here, attacking this pawn. The problem here is that these minor pieces are not really playing. But okay, let's try to go with the rook and give checkmate. Maybe it's enough. And if it's not enough, I will bring the other pieces. With something like, okay, I'm, I'm just, just giving mate. Not really, because knight there. So I will bring it this way. Knight here, knight there, c3, and bishop here. This looks like a perfect way. All right, knight here. We attack. Actually, that was a bad move. I should have played c3. So much better. Fine, we have to go back here. Now c3 and bishop here. Usually, guys, it's like this. You cannot give checkmate with just two pieces. Your opponent will find a way to defend. So you gotta, like, let everyone join the attack. Uh, wait a second, because maybe I have knight here. I'm attacking the queen and attacking this. But there is simply queen g6. Okay, let's play this move first. Good idea. You now this pawn is hanging, but it's not a problem, because... I have the knight, I have the queen, everything is protecting. Now I play this, saying just... Ooh, wait a second. Ah! Oh my god, my opponent can't take there. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> okay, I'll take here, and I have to play this. But now it's very bad, because they will take here. I have to sacrifice my rook. And, well, we have this end game where I'm basically lost. <laughs> okay, now they, they're moving way too fast. They are moving way too fast. I will go here and I will stop this. Perfect. We, we stop this. Perfect! We give a check and we farm other pawns. That's how it works. Okay, let's play rook here. Again. And we, we protect this. And now we might start to push this pawn. It might uh, be a bit annoying. Actually not. We go to take this other pawn. We take it. We play this. We play this. Well, this endgame is lost. Oh, sorry, this endgame is drawish, but my opponent doesn't want to draw it. Wants to lose it. Yeah, they really want to lose it. Because now after rook here, I can take with check and then protect the rook. So they're really trying to lose it. What? I'm just promoting. Yes, if I promote, it's checkmate. But I can give first a check, and then I can promote, right? 
That's quite good. Now I give a check and the next move I should win this rook. If the king goes here, I have king, queen here. If the king goes here, I have queen here. I take it. I take it. Jeez. Yes, actually, damn. That was a huge blunder, guys. That was a huge blunder and it, it just lost the game. And this was a brilliant move. Wow. Jeez, to my opponent. I, I just had to play the move g3 here. Let's face it. And then I... There is not this problem. Whew. Yeah, how one move can destroy you completely. Insane. And they were winning because after all the trades... Um, so here they played the endgame really very bad. After this, there were two pawns under attack and they just let me take everything. And this was very bad. They wanted to promote this pawn, but... You know, I just stopped it and took another pawn. So in this position, what they have to do is to try to consolidate. Maybe play king g7. I love this move. And after rook takes, you go with two pawns strong and you push them both. I really like this idea because two pawns are connected, can be very dangerous. Plus, this king is completely cut off. So the king cannot join the party and this looks very painful. I need to redeem myself after the last game. Ooh, the same opponent. Okay, fine. E4, E5. Revenge, revenge, revenge. Knight here, knight out. Also, one thing I noticed of my opponent is that they are playing too fast. Why do they play 10 minutes if they just blitz out everything? Then you gotta play blitz. Okay, here we are in the scotch gambit. This is like lots of theory. I know that I can take that pawn. If not, it would look like a very dangerous, right? But basically what I do is now I protect it by controlling the center. Now if my opponent knows theory, it goes really crazy because they can sacrifice a full piece, but they don't do it. Okay, so they go back, so I have two extra pawns right now, which are those two pawns here in the middle of the board. Now I shouldn't be greedy and try to keep both pawns, but I should probably just try to develop as fast as possible the king and castle, right? Sorry, the bishop and the king. So I think like bishop here looks fun because I'm actually protecting that pawn as well. And also if the pawn is falling, uh, I might have some counterplay against the pawn on f2. Uh, plus I'm ready to castle next move. So that is great. I don't think this move is good. I mean, I will stay there or I will push here. Maybe I will just push. So I keep things closed and I want to take here next. Yeah, my opponent is in huge danger. Because if I take here, I just help them to develop the knight. That's why I prefer this way. Okay, now I, I can just take here and then take the rook. And that's it. Uh, I was checking shortly if I have a beautiful checkmate. Because imagine knight here, this, and then a queen on h5. <laughs> that would be in lit, but still there is knight there. So no, it's not working. In this case, we might simply take here. And if the knight takes, we have a fork. So attention, Alex Pielo. Be careful. Don't move fast. Okay. He took there, which is a good move. Not gonna lie. I'm taking here and then I play this move. I'm attacking this bishop. And after all the trades, I'm very happy because I have an extra rook. Yep. Okay, they take. They take there. Now I just develop everything as fast as possible. I have two rooks. My opponent has just one. Uh, we bring the rook to the open files. That's perfect. Uh, the rook belong to open files. Uh, there is a pawn under attack. We don't really need to lose it. So I'm attacking the bishop and protecting the pawn at the same time. We go with the rook. And the rooks are also very strong on the second or the seventh rank. You know why? Because in the second rank, there are all the white pawns usually. I mean, there were lots of pawns. And so you can just take all of them. Perfect. The knight is under attack. We have to move it. We'll, we'll go here. We'll go here attacking this pawn. It's true. There is a pawn hanging there. Uh, but I think like the weakness of this one is, is much more important. I want to give mates. I just want to give a fast and furious checkmate. All right, let's play just rook here, attacking the bishop, and then I will play bishop here. I think the bishop will move all the way back, homie. Yep, I'm not so good with arrows. Ah! <laughs> Why do I always blunder with this guy? <laughs> yeah, I just blundered again. Okay, fine. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I like it to make it fun for content, right? Let's give it a check. I mean, we are still an exchange up. It's still fine, but why? Why to do that? We have now two rooks on the second rank. Let's play pawn here, attacking the knight. Well, okay, 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 okay. I see a way. I will go with the knight here and then sacrifice the rook and give checkmate. This is really good. This is a good idea of how to use the power of rooks plus knight. Hey, 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 boy. Hey, 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 boy. Attacking the rook. The rook will go on f1. I'm quite confident about it. But then I can sacrifice the rook to give checkmate. Maybe they simply resign here. Not sure. Hmm, they go all the way back. But that's a bad news. Because this is checkmate knight plus rook. And if you like the video, remember to like. And please also to subscribe. And now you can check out how to turn blunders into epic wins. <laughs>